which says, so if you're hopping on, say hello. I have a lot to get done today, so I'd like to get started. I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs, and um, I'm live every single Tuesday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Hi, MJ. Thanks for watching. And thanks for saying hello. Um, so I come I come live every Tuesday, and I'm a re, I'm an elite retailer for Dixie Bell, for Wise Owl Paints, uh, for Would You Bend, for Posh Pigments, for Roy Cycle Decoupage Tissues, for Prima um, Redesign with Prima, and I also Hi Mary, and I also have my own line of decoupage tissues. So I have a lot going on. And you can always shop off of my website or come visit me at um, Ground Floor Artist in Surprise, Arizona. And um, all of that information is up at the top of this post. So you can get to my website or get the address to my booth. So I'm going to put the camera back down because we got a lot to get done today. And um, I'm doing a really cool old window. So let me put the camera back down. Hey Mary, thanks. I got my hair cut yesterday. So I got a new do. Okay, so I think I think we're good. So I want to show you guys these windows are getting harder and harder to find, these old windows. And it had a whole bunch of hardware on it. And I took all of that off. I sanded it really well and cleaned it really well, and that was a big job, I'll tell you, because it was just crusty. And it has holes from where I took all that hardware off, and I just left them. I could use mud, hi Gail, I could use mud to fill it all in, but I don't want to do that. I, I just want the vintage look of this. And there's so many fun things that you can do with these old windows, but this is the project that I'm working on. So you can see the window and you can see that there's a pretty wreath in the window and then they put hooks on each side and um, then put uh, corbels on each side of it to hold a shelf at the top and then it's hanging on a wall and I just love that and you could do that with and I found this off of Pinterest and I thought oh that's what I'm gonna do with that window um, and I may sell it or I may keep it I don't know um, I've been keeping a lot of stuff lately but I've done a lot of stuff that I just really love so I picked up the corbels at Home Depot um, I think they were like, I don't know, three bucks a piece, I think. They weren't expensive. And so that makes that super easy. And I already have a wood shelf out there. I just need to cut it off the right length. And um, so I, I cleaned it really well with white lightning and rinsed it. And I'm painting. I've started painting. And I'm painting with Dixie Belle. Uh, coffee bean. I use coffee bean a lot and I'm going to use crackle on this. Um, if you guys have followed me for any length of time, you know I love me some crackle. Da -da. Um, and so when you're using crackle, you want to put whatever color on the base coat that you want to have crackling through. Um, and so I'm going to use drop cloth, Dixie Belle drop cloth. I started off thinking I was going to use um, fluff, 
And five minutes before I went live, I changed my mind and thought, nope, I'm going to use a drop cloth. I've, I always really like drop cloth and it looks really nice with this dark because this, when I put the drop, the steps are put one coat of your base coat color that you want to come shining through. And then you want to put, let it dry really well. So we're going to have to do some drying with the hair dryer. And then you put on your crackle and you put on one coat of the crackle and you uh, cross hatch it all over so that when it cracks, your cracks are going different directions. And then you let that dry really well. So once we get that done, I'll have to let it dry overnight. It's important that you let it dry super well. And then tomorrow I'll put the drop cloth on and that's when all the magic happens. So I will do a separate video of when I'm putting the drop cloth on and I'll post it up on um, Facebook and on YouTube. And if you guys haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love it if you would. I'm working super hard to build that channel. So what are you guys working on? I wish this was like Zoom and we could just have like a real conversation and I didn't have to wait for you guys to comment or stop and read comments, but let's see. Hey Gail, hey Vicki. Hi Karen, hi Diane. Well, I see lots of you watching, not too many um, questions. Also, I went in here and taped off all the glass. This piece is, I don't know how old it is, but this is an old, old window. And since I got it up in Heber Overgard, um, and that's a pretty old settlement up there, it, it could easily be 75 years or older, this window, and it's heavy. I don't know what wood it's made out of, but it's heavy. It's gonna take um, some strong, connectors to get it up on the wall. And I've done several of these windows. I've done several of them where I have done transfers inside the glass, which is really pretty and very effective. But this would be really cute if you hung it in a bedroom. It would look nice uh, hanging in a bathroom. The picture I showed you had uh, towels folded on the shelf. It could even, depending on what your home decor is, it could even be in a dining room or family room. So it's a really versatile piece. So if you guys are out picking or thrifting and you come across these old windows, if this kind of thing appeals to you, you should grab it up because like I said, they're hard to find. And it's funny because I was out at my garage and I don't know what I went out there for, but then I realized in a stack of wood and stuff that I have stacked up. There's another window. I don't remember when I found that one. I remember finding this one just about six weeks ago. So I've got another one in there that I can do something fun. And you guys can look on Pinterest and get great ideas. And speaking of Pinterest, you guys, I'm on Pinterest too. And that's another social medium that I'm really working on uh, building up. So follow me there because I post on there a lot. Hi, 
Hi, Sonia. I haven't seen you in a while, Sonia. Thanks for joining us. So what are you guys working on? Now this is only going to take one coat, especially because I'm using such a dark color. But keep in mind, you guys, that um, you can do any color underneath. I've done some sample boards that are in the shop um, at my booth so people can see, you know, if you use different colors, uh, what you're going to get. But it's always a good idea if you've got open jars of paint just to do that. Just put down on a sample board some of your open colors and then paint your crackle over the top of it and then put like either fluff or drop cloth or whatever color you want on top. And then you'll have an idea of what things will look like with different colors. I had a customer do um, a hutch and uh, to match her decor in her home, she painted the hutch like I'm doing the coffee bean. She did, um, I think it was barn red. It was one of the reds. I don't know if it was rustic red or barn red. I don't remember. And then she did the crackle and then she did drop cloth on top. So in all of her cracks was that barn red. And that turned out really, really pretty. Uh, it came out so pretty that um, I'm just waiting to find a piece to do that on myself. Now, up here on this hardware, I want to be sure you guys can see up there. Yep, you can. Um, I'm painting carefully up to it, and it's got a little bit of white paint on it from whoever previously painted, and that's okay because I'm going to use the posh pigments in the bronze color to touch those up. And I could have taken them off but they're really, really on there. And I do like the idea of leaving some of the original hardware on. And I usually do. So I left that hardware on. And the shelf, and it sits flush, so it's not going to interfere at all with the shelf that goes on top. So you guys, give me hearts up if you think this is a cool project. Oh, Karen, that breaks my heart. Where does your daughter live? Gail, I love Crackle too. Actually, I think it's real easy. Um, what was what part was the learning curve for you, Gail? Maybe that'll help knowing that, maybe that'll help others. Karen, I'm glad your daughter gave them to Habitat for Humanity. I shop there quite a bit. Um, different locations have carry different stuff. Um, and I love that that's what she did with it. But oh my gosh, if she had just put those windows online, she could have made a fortune for them. Because they're so popular, um, you know, the inventory on them is just running out. Like a long time ago, probably 20 years ago, I saw in a magazine, and I've never forgotten it, 
where it was real popular back then to build a big greenhouse with all of these windows. And you used all these windows in different shapes and sizes to build the greenhouse. And um, architecturally, it was very cool looking. And I always thought, oh gosh, that would be really fun to do. I love it when we can repurpose things. So Gail, you were just impatient. Um, yeah, the, the trick is, is honestly letting everything dry. And so it's one of those things you can't be impatient with. And like, theoretically, and I thought about doing it, but um, I thought about painting this and having it dry ahead of time. And I've done that on some of my lives when I've done crackles so that I know that it's good and dry. I'm, uh, But I wanted to apply the crackle today in the live so that you guys could see how to put it on and get the best crackle result with it. And honestly, the Dixie Bell Crackle is um, a really simple crackle to use. It's not complicated at all. I ordered another Crackle product. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. It's Pintart Fine Line Crackle Varnish, and it's two-step. And so I'm going to do a small decoupage piece to try this out. And then you put on component one first, let it dry. And then you put on component number two over component number one. And, and remember, this is on a decoupage piece. And then your decoupage piece will crackle up. And so I've tried using this crackle to make it happen. And... Uh, it did not work. I tried doing that on this piece and it didn't work. It didn't crackle it up using this crackle on here um, because it has, the Dixie Bell has to have paint to make it crackle up. So I'm anxious to try this out on, try that out on one of my decoupage pieces. Because you guys know how much I love to decoupage. Oh, it didn't work for you? Well, I've never tried it. I ordered some to give it a try. So um, hopefully by next week, um, I'll have had a chance to try it out. And I, I'll videotape it when I'm doing it. And what I've been doing with my videotapes, you guys, is I do, I load them up on YouTube because like I said, I'm trying to build that um, channel. But then I always post a link back to Facebook that takes you to the YouTube to see what I'm doing over there. I did get the stool almost finished. Um, I got the brown wax on it. And I used, oh my goodness, you guys, I used the Wise Owl Furniture Salve, and I used Tobacco Flower. This is, this smells so delicious, and they have like 30 different kinds of salves, and they're all um, organic, and they're made with essential oils and hemp oil, and that stool was really, really dry. It was really thirsty and it really needed that oil. And it looks like rich velvet, a rich velvet finish now. It is so pretty. 
I'll be posting pictures probably tomorrow. I went yesterday and um, picked up some wood and supplies at Home Depot and picked up a pretty plant to stage on top of that. So I'll get my picture done tomorrow. I wore myself out today just getting ready for this class. That was a lot of sanding and cleaning and these, these windows for this window had obviously been stored outside for a lot of t a long time because there was a lot of dirt and grime and it took some work. And the side that I'm painting is the side that was on the inside of the house. I kind of liked the back side and I was thinking that was the side I was going to use because it was so weathered. But then this hardware up here would have caused a problem trying to hang it. So when you're working on these kind of things and you're repurposing them from one use to another use, you kind of have to think through those things. And the hardware and stuff that was screwed on here, man, that was a trick to get off of here. even with my fancy tools that my kids gave me for my birthday and Christmas. Karen, thank you so much um, for thinking I'm artistic. Honest to goodness, these things that I um, demonstrate on these lives, I feel like everybody can do them because they're just things that you just need to follow the steps. If you just follow the steps, you're going to be super happy and successful. And if you have a certain project that you want to work on and you're not sure how to get started or how to get the um, look that you want for it, you can always feel free to reach out to me and we can have a conversation about it and make sure that you have the products and tools that you need to make whatever your vision is work. I mean, this is a good example of what I'm saying. This is not a complicated piece. I'm simply putting one coat of the coffee bean chalk paint on here. And this particular color, um, even with one coat, I get really good coverage with it. If this was going to be the final color on it, I would definitely do a second coat. Um, but because we're crackalackling this, um, it's not necessary. But this is going to be a piece when it's finished that people are going to look at and go be impressed and wonder how in the world you did that. I'm just lucky, I'm just blessed, not lucky, to get to wake up every morning and say to myself, what are you gonna create today? And I knew yesterday, I try to plan things out. Sometimes I'm real spontaneous about it and sometimes I'm, I'm organized and planned things out and I knew that this was going to be this week's project but in all reality I should have been working on it and cleaning it and prepping it yesterday instead of today.
but I didn't. I went to Home Depot. Um, I don't know what all I did yesterday. I had, I had to go to the shop for a while. I had friends come over in the afternoon, which was great. I just lifted this up and I'm painting these sides over here. You probably, I can't tell what you guys can see in the camera. I'm almost done. Got to get down here on this end. Hi, Jan. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Um, so let me get a coat over here on this end and then I'll exp and this end and then I'll explain it uh, while we're getting it dried. And like I said, I was going to work on that because I haven't I tried to do it with um, the Dixie Bell brand of Crackle, and it does not work. The Dixie Bell brand of Crackle is formulated to go on top of paint, and then it will crackle. It's a chemical reaction. Um, and since I wasn't painting over my decoupage, it didn't work. I tried it to see if it would, and it didn't. And so I was watching a YouTube video a while back and somebody was demoing how to crackle and they were using the Pentart brand, which I had never heard of. So I ordered some off of Amazon and I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I just haven't had a chance to experiment with it. I have a new rule that I have to follow. And my rule is, because this is a problem, you guys. When I go live every Tuesday and start a new project, I end up with 20 projects all in various stages. And my house just completely got overrun and out of control with all of these projects that were in various stages. And that was really depressing me to have all of that stuff undone, unfinished, and I was just overwhelmed by it. So my new rule is that I have to, I have to be diligently working on projects every day and getting them done and out of here. And so that's why sometimes you'll see me still working on the same project for more than one week. And then I've started also... Um, Filming them, even when I'm not live with you guys, I film them and then edit them and stick them out, out there on YouTube. Um, 
so that you can see how uh, different projects end up completed because um, most of the time it's really hard to finish a project in one hour. I mean, sometimes I've done it, but most of the time that's hard. So, oh, hi, Melissa. I'm glad you made it on. Tap and ballet is done for granddaughter and you have Tuesdays free again. Oh, I understand that, Jan, because I went to my granddaughter's dance recital on, I think it was Saturday night, and she's done for the summer. She's done with dance for the summer. Um, and she was in six dances in that recital. And oh my gosh, just unbelievably cute. Just, I couldn't get over how good it was. Okay, so back to the crackle. This, and I haven't tried this yet, but you guys, I will definitely do a live on this and let you know how it goes. This is Pintart, and it's fine line crackle varnish and there is a, a wider varnish also but i got this off of pinterest and it has two components part one and part two and they're labeled on the front and they're labeled on the top of the lids so you don't get them mixed up so with part one you Use that as your medium to decoupage your project. So, for instance, I this is one I've done. It's not crackled. Um, and so, to put down my papers, I usually use satin top coat. If you watched me decoupage much, you would know that that's what I normally use. I never, ever, ever, ever use Mod Podge because it is not archival. It will yellow and crack over time. So don't, you know, I I try to let you guys know that's not a good project or product to be using on pieces that you've spent so much time, often a lot of money on. So pretend that this has been decoupaged with part one, part one of this. Then you let it dry, and then we would normally use satin top coat to go over this to finish it. Well, then you use part two of this when this is dry and go over it, and then it will give you a crackle finish on top of your decoupage. So I'll try really hard to get an example of that done for next week and then show you guys in the class and I did order that off of Amazon that's not a product that I um, carry or sell so let me find the hair dryer and you guys talk amongst yourselves I'll look at questions but I do have to dry this super well if you if you don't dry your paint well before you put the crackle on it that's when that crackle is going to fail
This is the top of a china hutch. And I crackled that. I crackled that hutch. I put a new back on it, a new light kit on it, and um, added a shelf on the bottom of it, and then pr pretty fancy legs on it, which you can't see. But it's one of my favorite pieces, and you can see how pretty, hopefully you can see in the camera, how pretty all of that crackle came out on there. Let me get see if I can give you guys a little closer up. It's one of my favorite pieces. I've always loved crackle. Ugh. This room is crowded. Okay, so there, yeah, you can see the crackle really well. And it, this is one of my favorite pieces. And then the shelf down there is a shelf I added on. And then you really can't see the pretty legs down there, so. Let's see how we're doing on questions. Oh, thanks, Melissa. Yeah, Gail, I can understand. It'll all make sense if you see it happening rather than me just explaining it. Um, so I completely get that, and I'll do my best to get, um, get that on my schedule soon. one way to know if a piece is dried well is to put your hand on it and if it's cold to the touch it's wet so and like I said this needs to be dry that's really important for a minute and then I'll lay my hand on it and again and see. Um, if you tuned in late, you guys, this is what the project is going to look like. Um, so it's a six pane glass window. They're exactly the same. And then I'll get hooks to put on the sides of this, like where it shows a little hat hooks or purse hooks or whatever, jewelry hooks. And then I have the corbels here 
to add the shelf on on the top so it's going to go like this and they have to get painted also and i still have to want you to be able to see that i st there's the corbels and then the shelf that when I cut it will go up here across the top of that flush and it will be supported by the back of the shelf and on these corbels. And then of course it'll have the hooks on each side here. And then I love the way they put a pretty wreath in the middle of this. So of course I'll run over to Hobby Lobby and pick up a wreath. I have to make sure it's on the week that everything's 50% off. But that's the plan, you guys. And I found this on um, Pinterest. And like I said, there are so many things. I'm going to give this one more time with the hair dryer. I'm sorry for all the drying time. But I'm telling you, if you don't let it dry well, it will fail. stir up my crackle this is the Dixie Bell crackle this is what um, I used on that hutch I've used it on many many pieces and I like to use a paint stick you guys popsicle stick instead of shaking my paints. I think all the paints still say shake well, but I have stopped shaking because it doesn't get all the ingredients down on the bottom. There's like a little ring here if you shake it, but if you stir it, you get all the ingredients all nicely incorporated. And that's important, especially in crackle, that's important. And the other benefit is by doing that, I don't get a whole bunch of product up here in my lid. And then when you go to put your lid on, then you've got crusties all around the outside and makes your lid hard to open and the skin on the top of that. It just eliminates all of that. So that's just a little tip from Deborah Booker Designs to you guys. So I've stirred this up really well. And I'm going to use the same brush I put the um, paint on. This is a Dixie Belle Flat Small, and I use these brushes all the time. And this brush, you can see all the paint and everything on it, is at least four years old. Um, and you can see that the, the brushes itself are still the bristles are still in really great condition <clears throat> and I paint every day so okay so I want to bring you down as close as I can let me see if I can bring that camera over Um, I clean my brushes with um, 
scrubby soap. Let me see if I have one on the shelf to show you. Okay, so this one's well used, scrubby soap. It comes in lemon, lime, and orange, and they're made with essential oils, and they smell delicious, and I use them to clean my hands, my nails, and everything. And this one is almost used up, but it has a whole layer on the inside here of the soap and the essential oil, and then it's got the sponge here and the sponge on the bottom. So I usually, under the faucet, take this and just rub my brush across it till it's all sudsy. And then I flip this over and on this side where there's more bristle than there is um, soap. And I just go over the brush really, really well with this and then rinse it. And then hold the brush vertical like this under the faucet and let the water run down into it so it, it gets all of this out. And I am really good, and these will last a long time, you'd be surprised. Um, and I am really good about washing my brushes. Uh, a tip, if you don't already know this, like if I was going to paint another coat of brown on here, I would just slip my brush into a Ziploc br uh, bag, spray it with some mist, and then go back and use that brush again because, I hate just talking here, because um, you got a lot of paint in that brush. Hi, Robin. So with a lot of paint in that brush and then you go to wash it out, you're just wasting a lot of paint. So put it in a Ziploc bag. If it's gonna be a day or two, stick it in the refrigerator and then just start painting again. Um, if you're not good about washing your brushes, there's another product called Clean as a Whistle. And um, I personally haven't used it because I am good about taking care of my brushes because they are an investment. Um, but I've heard good things about this. So, and I do carry this and this is on my website. So let's get back to this real quick. Let me see, did I get your questions? Melissa, I love old windows too. Karen, I think you should go get yourself a window. All right, let me get this back down. I want to be sure I have you guys in the right place. Not quite enough. Okay, there we go. Joanna, you're so you're so welcome. I mean, that's the whole point of doing these lives with you guys is if you have any questions about anything, um, this is a great time to ask them. And let me, you know, let me show you how to solve problems and get the results that you want. So you might see me touching this and I'm only going to crackle this section on this live because we're getting close to time. Um, and then I wanna let the rest of it dry because like I said earlier, letting your piece dry properly is the key to a really good crackle. Um, and I've dry, I concentrated on this section, so hopefully I've got it dry enough. So I just dip my brush in and get about this much paint on it. And then I just you, uh, get a good liberal 
not a sloppy, but a liberal coat. And if it's vertical, like it's great because this isn't vertical, but if it's a vertical piece like this hutch was, put it on less thin and it's just one coat. But if it's vertical, you, it can start to run on you and you don't want runs. So I'm gonna stop right there. And I'm gonna put my brush over here in water because I'm not gonna, I'm gonna crackle it tomorrow, the rest of it. I've always had really, really good luck with using crackle. I did a um, furniture boot camp class about two months ago and two of the gals did crackle in that class. And one of them did it on a really cool children's chair. And the chair itself was a really deep dark brown color. So she didn't have to paint it brown like what I just did. She painted the crackle on, let it dry. And then I think she used drop cloth on top of that one and it cracked gorgeous. That piece was stunning. One of the other gals had to paint her table and then put the crackle on. And then when she went to put her top coat on, it didn't crackle as much as what she wanted it to. And it's because these products need time to dry well in between. So just think about it. Thankfully, on the color, with that dark color, I only need one coat. Uh, if you live in a humid climate, that's going to make a difference. So to be successful with your crackle, just to always be sure that it you've given it adequate time. And like tomorrow, I'll go back and crackle this whole piece um, and get it done tomorrow. But I'll crackle it in the morning and then, you know, around one o'clock in the afternoon, I'll come back in here and I'll have my ceiling fan blowing and that will uh, do the trick. Now, I'm going to put it back, the camera back down so that you can see uh, what this is doing. And this is perfectly normal and I want you to see it so you don't freak out. Okay, so you see all of these little circles on here, all of these little cells. Um, that's just perfectly normal, and so don't freak out when you see that. Um, that's just what it does, and then when I paint the um, drop cloth over the top of it tomorrow, I'm going to get all of those really pretty uh, cracks. And like I said, I will do, um, I, I will videotape that whole process and get it up as soon as I can up to the YouTube. And if you guys haven't subscribed to my YouTube station, I would super, super appreciate you doing that. Um, it's Deborah Booger Designs over on YouTube. And I think I probably have 25, 30 videos up there and I upload at least two new ones every week. So Karen, I think you should go find yourself a cute window because this one's going to be amazing. I'm super, super excited about it. So does anybody else have any questions that I missed? Let me see. I want to mention to you guys, oh, Joanna, thanks so much. I got it cut yesterday, and I am so happy. It was, it was 
looking really witchy. And I have a problem with losing a lot of my hair and it's thinned out so much and I was just really unhappy with it. And so I found a new girl to go to and she, I think she did a good job and I came home happy. Um, but I wanted to mention you guys, please go on my website. I have so many classes on there. I've never had so many classes uh, ever and at least three of them are online classes. So if you don't live in the area, you could still sign up for the online class. And um, if you do live in the area, then there's in July, I'm doing Christmas in July, all the month of July. And I have a whole bunch of super fun classes on there. So, and, and to come over and see where my booth is, it's, it's an amazing place. It's just so inspirational. So I hope you guys will check out the website and see if any classes appeal to you. And thank you so much for tuning in with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. It makes me happy when I see you show up every week. And if you think this was a helpful video, if you would share it, I'd appreciate that. You guys have a great night and I'll see you soon. Bye.